everything about lost words beyond the page focuses on telling a story. There are a few puzzle platforming sections, but largely the mechanics exist to bring greater depth to the story. The dual story structure is unique and constantly switching between them keeps the game from becoming boring. The first story is the main one and follows Izzy's first person view of their personal life, but through their journal. They're younger, but very artsy. The second story is more of a traditional game, but follows a story that Izzy is writing. It's a grand fantasy adventure through foreign lands chasing after a dragon. Both sections are interactive, but they're quite different, so let's explore. The journal part of Lost Words is the most simplistic area of the game, but it is artistic. Izzy narrates their life over some beautifully drawn watercolors. The developer played with text placement and mechanics to amplify the narration. A word of warning, the story is not on the light side. Izzy is going through some stuff, especially for a child. The voice acting is good and I find the art mesmerizing. There are some specific full page watercolors that still stick out in my mind. This section of the game is only about taking in the story even though it's interactive. You cannot die and your only goal is to reach a part of the journal to continue to the next section. I like it and it's my favorite part of the game. It's gorgeous and emotionally deeper than anything I've played recently. It feels painstakingly handcrafted to deliver the most emotion with every page. But it wouldn't be complete without the second half of the game, the fantasy story. Here, a character of your choosing is going on an adventure to help their town. It's surprising you can even choose the character's name and it's still fully voice acted. That must have been a ton of work. There's a tone shift away from the more personal journal to a more typical fantasy story, but some themes carry through. There's also an artistic shift away from the 2D into the 3D. The mechanics are different as well and expand into traditional gameplay. For example, pushing boxes to jump to platforms. Then you have the main character's book. You can pull words from it to interact with the world. For example, by grabbing the repair word from the book and putting it over a broken bridge, you can rebuild the bridge to cross it. There is a small subset of words you carry around the entire game and a few special ones for certain parts. It's neat, but the game makes it very obvious when and where you need to use these special words. The glowing blocks and swirling effects point out each and every single interactable object. Is it a bad thing? No, but it does keep the game on the easier side. Also, the mechanics keep it simple. You will get stuck and need to use your power to continue. It's very infrequent to use two different powers to continue. I can understand keeping the mechanics straightforward, but it does feel a little like a lost opportunity to allow the player to explore. Still, the mechanic is good and allows an interesting way to interact with the world. You should keep in mind there is an additional goal to collect fireflies on your journey. Most of them are directly in your path through the game, but some are hidden away and do reward exploring everything. It feels a little tacked on, but if you want some reward for seeing every path in the game, then it, it's here. Anyway, one of the questions I expect will come up is, is Lost Words for kids? And my guess is probably, but probably not alone, especially when I consider the fantasy story and the obvious gameplay mechanics. However, the concepts in the journal are very emotional and cover a more adult topic. That said, I don't have a kid, which might discount my opinion entirely. Uh, the way I see it, the topic will come up anyway in life, and if you talk to your kid, then it's fine. If you're really concerned, you can play Lost Words for a little bit, maybe an hour, probably less, to see where it's going before playing with your child. And keep in mind, I'm not giving parental advice, and you can do whatever you want.
overall lost words beyond the page is great if you're looking for a strong emotional story-based game while the mechanics are simple and limited they do provide heavy support to the story and i like that all the little choices you can make to customize your playthrough helps too and i could see it being very engaging for children I found the journal section to be more captivating because of the raw emotion than the fantasy story, but both are good. I recommend it if you enjoy story-based games with full voice acting. But if you're still watching, then you should definitely subscribe to this channel because indie game reviews come out all the time and you might find something you like, you never know, and that's just the way the videos work. So please subscribe and thanks for watching.